Dr. Skandor, would you start by introducing yourself? Sure. My name is uh, Joe Skandor. I'm an assistant professor at Weill Cornell Medicine in New York City. Uh, I'm a physician scientist. My laboratory studies uh, blood formation, normal and malignant. And clinically, I treat people with uh, myeloid neoplasms, uh, particularly myeloid proliferative neoplasms. Would you define myelofibrosis for us and also provide an explanation of primary versus secondary myelofibrosis? Sure. Myelofibrosis is in the class of diseases called myeloproliferative neoplasms. And really, it's, it's a sort of marker feature is scarring in the bone marrow. Clinically, this comes along uh, most commonly and fairly universally with anemia. And there can be abnormalities of both the white blood cell count and the platelet count, uh, sometimes often in the beginning being too high, uh, and then they can also become uh, too low. It tends to be a progressive disease, although the pace at which it progresses is different in different people, and there are a variety of different uh, features that, that can sort of go along with risk, but every individual uh, course is, is uh, individual. Uh, primary myelofibrosis is what we refer to when the diagnosis is made, and there's no antecedent, there's no precursor malignancy. And so you come in and the diagnosis is myelofibrosis and we can't find anything that came before. Mm -hmm. Secondary myelofibrosis is what we refer to when somebody has another blood disorder, usually uh, essential thrombocythemia or polycythemia vera. And in a small subset of these patients, the disease can change what we call evolve uh, or progress into a, a fibrotic uh, phenotype or uh, associated with the marrow scarring and, and a lot of the features of myelofibrosis. Although there are some uh, subtle differences between primary and secondary, they're more similar than different in terms of their clinical features and how we treat them. Mm -hmm.